Hello everyone, welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin and today we're going to be looking into the energy, insights, and guidance on their way in for you over these next two weeks. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back, my beautiful kindred spirits, and anyone new who may be joining us here today for your reading on the next two weeks ahead of you. So this could be right now, throughout November, you could be watching this at any time um, and see what's coming in for you over the next two weeks. So with this in mind, we will be looking into these three piles here in a second, but if you are new to the channel, do feel free to subscribe as I put out new videos every single Monday for love, career, and so so much more um, and I also do some fun educational videos as well on tarot and charm casting so if that's something you're interested in do feel free to subscribe and if you've been here for a while feel free to share these videos with those who you would think would be really benefiting from them and you can also check out the offerings I have down below for both Samhain spell and ritual paper um, and you can also check out these snail mail readings that I provide as those are really fun especially around the holiday season to give out as gifts for those of you who would like to. So feel free to check all of that out down below in the description and we're going to go ahead and look at these three piles. So do feel free to take your time choosing these piles today as each of the energies are different. There are They are very different piles but there are some collective threads that are really running through each of them. So do feel free to take your time and really sit with them. Uh, but we are going to look here first at group one. Each of the piles have both a watercolor affirmation and a rune for you to choose between. So here for pile number one, you have the rune here of Jera, alongside the affirmation here of live for today. So that's pile number one. For pile number two, you have the rune here of Perthro or Pirthru, and you also have here the affirmation of let go of hate. So that is pile number two. And then last but not least, here is pile number three with Redo as the rune and the affirmation of laughter is the best medicine. So that is pile number three. So before you start speeding off to the timestamps, I like to invite you to take a deep and cleansing breath here with me to really ground into the piles and into your intuition here. So let's go ahead and take a deep cleansing breath here together. And as always, there's no right or wrong way to choose your piles here today. You can choose all three of them, you can choose between them, you can flip-flop and change your mind as many times as you'd like. Um, all of the timestamps will be down below in the description alongside the chapter marks of this video. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in not only subscribing but also checking out the different ways in which you can interact with this channel even further, you can check out my offerings down below alongside my Instagram community as I'm very active over over there and I've met so many of you through there so do feel free to just say hello or check out the different behind the scenes things and yeah we're gonna go ahead and get started here with pile number one hello group one if you've decided to choose this of live for today alongside the message of Jera, which we'll be talking on here in a moment then this is the pile for you um, I'm going to go ahead and set these both down here for you today, and we're going to be using the charms, a couple of different oracle decks, and we're also going to be using the Cosmic Slumber Tarot for today's reading. All of the um, information on each of these will be listed down below in the description in case you want to see what I used. But yeah, we're going to be looking into the next two weeks for you. You guys usually know the drill by now. We're going to be doing three cards, your internal and external influences. We're also going to look into some advice cards as well and the charms, uh, but we're first going to start by looking at the specific rune that you chose. Um, so we have a live for today alongside uh, Jera here 
and um, I think it's always nice to just give you guys a little snapshot of what this specific rune means, so you're welcome to pause here, uh, but it says harvest as its main word, and it is for things that are in cycles. It is the fruits of your labor, results, um, yearly accomplishments, and bigger growth, so I always see these as like bigger cycles and bigger cycles of growth that you're working through, thinking of it as in a like garden of growth and um, harvest harvest in that way. So it could be that you're just really harvesting a lot from your, your days over the next two weeks already. Just in general, you might be more present over the next two weeks because um, what you are harvesting, you might be more grateful or more mindful of the moments within each day because it says here, live for today. So we're going to see more information as we move forward. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, but if you guys would like to, do feel free to get settled, grab some coffee, a nice cup of tea, um, get a cozy blanket, whatever makes you feel comfortable and relaxed. And as always, feel free to send your energy in through time and space as well. I also want to mention really quick before we get started um, that my <laughs> nephews are over as well. I usually film these very late into the night after midnight so that, um, you know, there aren't really a lot of background sounds. Uh, but one of these nephews is really refusing to sleep. So if you hear little toddler feet or hear, um, hear them, then just know that that's what's going on. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started anyway. So here we go. Group one, Jera, and live for today. Let's see what you have coming in. We also have a dog upstairs as well. Um, so you have the devil here, which the devil has a lot to do with um, moving through cycles of habits, especially since we have cycles coming in. That's sort of the cycle kind of energy that I'm getting here is that you're maybe moving through a cycle that you've gone through many times before of trying to maybe um, move through a bad habit or a habit that personally just doesn't feel very fulfilling or healthy for you. Could be around money, it could be around um, just like being spending too much time on your phone before you go to bed. It could be something much bigger or larger. It could be small little things that are subtle but add up. Um, but I think you're going to either be more aware of it or just in general, um, it could be that you're either really succeeding in kind of moving through that habit or the very opposite um, of the opposite side of a cycle, right? Uh, so that's something just to keep in mind. And if you already are getting like a feeling that you might be moving back into it when you might not want to, this could just be a bit of advice coming through right away. Uh, but let's see what else you have coming through. So group one, group one, what do you have coming in for the next two weeks here? Okay. So you have both the Nine of Swords here alongside the Hermit card. So it could be that the reason why you might be feeling like you're kind of moving back into these habits or kind of falling back on them, using them as sort of a um, sort of safety blanket or, or comfort, because, right, that's a lot of the reasons why we come back to them, because they can be easier or they give you comfort in some way or relieve something in some way. And it's not always a bad thing, right? Um, everybody's habits are very different and what might be healthy for one person might not be for another. So it's also just distinguishing and discerning that for yourself. Uh, but the Nine of Swords, in combination with the hermit is really giving me this feeling that you're kind of either going to be by yourself or feeling a bit of that loneliness feeling around this time of year, um, especially for those in the northern hemisphere, right? We're kind of like coming down um, just before the big holiday season or things are ramping up and you're maybe just not being able to see friends as often or go out as much or maybe you just genuinely are feeling overwhelmed and want some peace of mind and want some time off and want to kind of be a bit of a hermit. And these aren't all necessarily bad things, right? But it is something just to be aware of that you might be feeling this feeling to um, kind of uh, go into hermit mode or to move into sort of a hibernation mode as we head towards the darker half of the year. And also the Nine of Swords talks a lot about feeling um, like something's just on their way in, right? This It's not actually that any of these swords represent actual swords. They usually represent communication, things that other people want from you, anxiety, overwhelm. They represent, like, if you could imagine this as each sword talking to you um, and, and having something to say to you. 
and just a bunch of chattering people in a room. It just feels kind of overwhelming is what I'm getting from this. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling like there's just a lot of voices in the room, a lot of things telling you you need to be doing this or you've got to go over here or your voices in your head, then it might be good to have a little bit of that retreat or by just being aware that you have a lot of strength and capability to move past it as well and that you're very strong and you're very capable. But everybody also needs a little bit of that um, tempering energy to also relax. So there's definitely a balance here and I feel like you're kind of having to sort of have to fight that balance back and forth this next two weeks. Uh, but I want to look a little further, right? We're going to get some advice and a little bit more information by moving on to your internal and external influences card. So especially since you have things internally showing up here and then a lot of chatter on the outside, I'd be really interested in these two cards. So first we'll look into your external influences. So this is a card to represent what's coming into your life over these next two weeks that um, are outside of your control. Other people's feelings, thoughts, emotions, actions, um, society at large, bigger events, and things like that. So let's see what that is for you. So let's see. Group one, what do you have coming in for those external influences? Okay. So when it comes to Jasmine, Jasmine has a um, very strong scent a very like I talked about earlier I feel like you guys are very strong and capable and you know what you are doing and I feel like there's a lot of people maybe in your life who are kind of right now trying to sway you one way or gaslight you another way or try to kind of put doubt into your mind not always in a malicious way but you know sometimes it does just happen and jasmine is just a reminder that you planted yourself in this space because you knew that this was going to be what was useful to you was a good place to be and so if right now planting yourself in a way to just sort of take some time away from other people or to move um or to you know, halt contact with them or whatever the situation is. The point is you planted yourself there. You chose that decision because it was meant for you and it was useful to you and you felt it in your gut and you followed um, your own voice, right? Not all the other voices of others, but your own voice. And so since we have this in the external influences as just some advice here, it's just reminding you that other people's voices don't matter, right? Whatever would have showed up here to tell you what's happening and who says what and whatever's happening in external influences, the most important voice in the room is yours. So stick to your own voice and stick to your own guns and, and kind of remind yourself of that. Um, on the other side, let's see the other one. So we're going to be looking now at your internal influences. So this might give us a little bit more information on... Um, where things are happening that are inside your control, your own voice, thoughts, behaviors, actions, those sorts of things. So let's see what's coming in for you, group one. Group one. Okay, both in the spring suit. Interesting, spring has a lot of that energy of starting over. It could also just be that... Um, those of you in the southern hemisphere are just coming out of spring or just about to come out of spring and heading into summer so there's a bit of that like still continuing to stick to what you started uh, but when it comes to cherry here it tells us more of what we physically need or what we are personally really needing right now it has a lot to do with our needs um, uh, the cherry showcases to us also a bit of that temperance energy of the two cherries, um, duality, those sorts of things. So when I'm thinking of this, it makes me think too that there's something that needs to be balanced back out. And that seems that either it has more to do with these habits that are kind of balancing back out. Um, it can also be that you are, again, hearing your own voice and that's helping you to feel a little bit more grounded. Um, but whether you feel kind of stuck, and like I mentioned at the beginning, some of you you might be feeling like you want to come out of hermit mode if that's how you're feeling um, it could be that that is the the side of the duality that needs a little bit of shifting right trying to get out a little bit more or communicate a little bit more um, have others listen to your voice a little bit more but on the flip side if you're feeling like you are currently 
needing a bit of that hermit mode and craving that hermit mode and needing a bit of that that time off and others are you know still kind of in your space and putting in doubt about that then this is again to listen to your own voice but also to listen to the needs of your body and to respect that to respect when your body is really trying to communicate with you through maybe you're getting a lot of headaches or your body is aching in this way or you're feeling very uncomfortable or whatever the sensation may be or the intuitive gut feeling this is a really big indication to really listen to that and listen to those needs and then to kind of help yourself to um help your body throughout that and to make more time for those needs so with that in mind let's go ahead and pull your final card here and then we'll move on to your watercolor affirmation or sorry not your watercolor affirmations your charms rather uh and we'll pull you um a few of those but if you are enjoying this reading so far please be sure to give this video a like it really does help the channel and i appreciate it as well uh but let's go ahead and see the advice card coming through for your next two weeks so this is going to be flora or fauna on their way in for you okay so we have the moon again more of that duality showcasing that again some of you are really on one side or the other to this um and that things are beginning to balance out i just realized i didn't put the rest of these over here so i'm going to set those down um but yeah it just talks about that duality again that we were getting from the cherry to not only listen to your own voice but also what your body is trying to voice to you um, to listen to the habits that you have in and see how those can balance back out um, and then also there's just a lot of right like tempering things and balancing things back out so things aren't on such big extremes where you have really extreme feelings like this or or feeling the extremity of voices in and outside of your corner so a lot of things are going to begin to start balancing out and start finding a little bit more of that balance, but it is going to be possibly a bit uncomfortable, that process, um, if not useful in the end. So that's what I'm really getting here. So just sort of stick it out and to keep in mind that you are trying to find balance in each moment and each action that you take and that everything isn't always so black and white either, right? Um, sometimes things don't have such a perfect... Uh, set in stone black and white or good and evil good habit bad habit sort of energy sometimes we're just replacing a bad habit with a slightly better one but maybe not the best one right and that's still working towards maybe something that would be healthier or better for you so these are just things to keep in mind that it doesn't always have to be this perfect model for yourself um and that you're still working in your direction and, and working for yourself and, and doing the best you can. And I think that's important to just remind yourself that you're doing the best you can. So let's go ahead and move on to the charms. And we will pull these for you for the next two weeks. So here we go. Group one. Okay, so we have a few. Let's go ahead and zoom you in so you can see them a little bit. Um, so I do want to mention again that you did have live for today to start everything off. And it can be just that everything that you are living feels very, again, you're very mindful of it. So you are very mindful of these changes and shifts and things that are happening, the duality shifts that are going on. Um, but that doesn't always make them easy or simple. So let's go ahead and see what we have. We have over here on the Hermit um, Flexibility uh, showing up here with the Flexibility Charm. And then we also have the Transformation Charm. This one usually represents more of like a metamorphosis transformation as this used to be a spoon handle and is now a pendant. So the point is that things can transform, they can change. Um, we don't have to stay the same or have the same voice or do the same thing we always have. So even though you have been strong or even though you have been known for being a very um, sociable person or always a hermit or whatever it is that you feel like you've always had kind of like stuffed on top of you, a label on top of your head, um, you're being more flexible with that and you're going to be learning to kind of have a little bit more of that temperance energy, less of that this is my box and this is your box energy. So I think also by taking a bit of time off and or for those of you who want to get out of the hermit energy, um, 
regardless of which action you take, it's still going to be really transformative and give you a little bit more flexibility in your life. And I think that's good to note. Um, You also have the, interesting, yes, um, you also have the little mouse charm. I always see this as being sort of a mouse that's like kind of pessimistic, a little bit um, sassy about the situation, not always the happiest about it, right? They've got their hands on their hips. They're a bit, you know, grumpy about it possibly. And so, like I said, these aren't going to be necessarily feeling like the most comfortable changes, but the changes are still going to be really useful in that transformation and tempering of those extremities that you have going on. So you also have over here the guiding light charm. Um, I always see this as like reminding me of um, either a flashlight, a guiding light, or a uh, lighthouse in some way, right, to kind of show you home or to show you back um, kind of as an inner compass. And with that, you have a more of that energy to listen to your own voice, your own inner compass when it comes to this ten of swords, or sorry, this nine of swords rather, to listen to your own heart, to listen to what you, what is best for you, putting yourself first a little bit, and not only if, even if you already are putting yourself first, but to not doubt that decision, because it, it's really coming through as it's a very important one for you, and then we also have the number 11 here, which is like the wish-making uh, number so there also could be that um, wishes might be coming through as well and being fulfilled through this duality process and that might be you know sometimes we wish for something and people are like right you have to be careful what you wish for uh, so it's not necessarily that what you wished for was bad but it also can mean that just because you wished for something doesn't mean it isn't always a comfortable process to get there and so you might feel a little bit of that uncomfortable feeling to move through these um, different emotions the Uh, changes that are happening when it comes to this duality and the doubt that you might be feeling but um, those wishes are still coming through uh, maybe just in a way you weren't expecting so those are all of your cards and charms here I do hope you got something out of this reading your reading did have less of a necessarily quote-unquote positive um, aspect to it but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to be positive down the, the line So, like I said, it might be kind of uncomfortable now, but it is growth that I feel like you really need and is going to be something you can look back on a few weeks from now or a year from now and you can see the changes that were happening and that these were like those small stepping stones. Uh, So I hope that this was useful to you. If it was, do feel free to give this video a like, to comment down below, and also if you are interested in the other readings that I have on this channel, do feel free to subscribe as well as I put out new readings every single Monday. You can also check out all the different offerings that I provide down below in the description. I have snail mail readings which are sent to you in the mail and are for any question or query that you have in mind. And then I also have a Sawin spell and ritual paper and other fun offerings that you can check out down there as well. So all of that will be down there alongside the Kindred Tip Jar, and I do hope you found this reading useful to you for these next two weeks, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Hello Group 2! If you've decided to choose this specific message with Let Go of Hate alongside the rune here of Perthro, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to set your rune down here and we'll talk about it more here in a minute um, and we'll see how it relates to your specific message um, that came through here. We are going to be using the charms alongside, as I mentioned, the watercolor affirmations um, alongside also different oracle decks and the tarot deck of choice here today is the Cosmic Slumber tarot. So to get started, do feel free to start getting settled as well. We're going to look first into the specific rune that you chose. So the rune that you chose here looks like this, and um, I have a little book that I wrote on each of the little different runes and this one here is I like to call it a lot of people call it the dice box but I always see it sort of as a closet something you kind of have hidden un like the it just feels like the dusty boxes at the bottom of your closet that you don't even remember what you put there or that you've secretly put things there on purpose like there's just something about a mysterious unknown element to it um or secrecy so that's why I like 
um, the idea of calling it the closet as well in case that resonates for you. But it says here the unknown. Um, it can represent gambling or risking something, the bigger picture like destiny and fate, hidden secrets and synchronicities. So it's got quite a very hidden, mysterious, sort of the moon tarot card energy to it. Um, and we're going to see how that resonates with the let go of hate. Um, just immediately, those two in combination give me a lot of that feeling of that you kind of pushed a lot of things down. There's a bit of resentment maybe that's building up at the bottom of that closet, that dusty box, you know. Um, and that, that might be opening and, and kind of overflowing there. So that's something just to keep in mind in case that's resonating for you from the start but we're gonna look further with the tarot cards so we're gonna be pulling as always three cards here to look into the main energies of the next three or the next two weeks and then we're also gonna pull a card for external influences internal influences an advice card and the charms here at the end so do feel free to send your energy in and get settled and get yourself settled with like a cozy blanket some coffee a nice snack a little cup of tea some water whatever Ever feels comfortable and nice for you and we'll get started here I do want to mention as well that my nephews are over and I usually film these very very late at night but one of them is refusing to sleep so if you hear little feet running around above me or around me then uh, just keep that in mind uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get started so group two here what do we have coming in for you for the next two weeks the top main energies coming through for group two okay so first off we have the seven of pentacles this has a lot to do with an um kind of waiting on your harvest to grow or it's kind of like you've planted the seeds you're you're kind of waiting for something to actually happen so there is that mysterious element here coming through more i always see this as sort of a backwards question mark like you're not only questioning things but you're questioning the questions um so there is a lot of um, unknown element here in terms of something that you're planting or trying to get started on or trying to learn or grow in right now. Um, usually because of the pentacles, it has a lot to do more with career, home life, money, your body, things like that. Uh, but we'll look a little further. So group two, what else do you have coming in here for the next two weeks? Oops. Oh, we've got another pentacle card and a cup card. So we have the nine of cups, the wish making card. Interesting. And then we also have here the king of pentacles. So we definitely have a combination of a, a couple of different uh, cards in terms of um, it being more about materialistic things. And a lot of people hear materialistic and they think, well, I'm bu not buying things or consumerism or something like that. Uh, but material just is material. It can be anything from a rock to the most expensive diamond, right? It's not really about price, uh, but there's something that you're trying to grow regardless of the expense, regardless of the worth. Um, but you're trying to grow something or learn something or build something and you just don't have all the answers. So since we have the king of um the king of pentacles showing up here, there is this feeling that they might have some answers for you. But because we have that let go of hate and also the nine of cups, which usually represents um feeling fulfilled, but at the same time the nine of cups can also, especially in this card, showcase sort of an energy of like um kind of like pride is what I'm getting here like kind of wanting to make sure like you do it yourself you want to be kind of self-made or do something on your own you don't want someone else to take credit for your work or take credit for how far you've come just because you asked for their advice that one time and so since we had that resentment feeling we had that mysterious feeling and then we had that let go of hate going on here it could be that some of you are feeling a bit of resentment towards this person a little bit of um you know, just they're not maybe the person you want to go to, even though they ha might have the answer for you. It might just be that there's some like uh, bad blood there, you know? So this isn't to say that you have to go talk to this person or the cards are telling you you must go talk to them, even though you're feeling all of this. But because there is this release feeling and the Nine of Cups almost showcasing this like almost like oil spill, like you're kind of slumming through it, this slumming through this pride feeling, um, it's making me feel that like, for some of you, if, if that's resonating for you, it might be best for you to still ask anyways, or to at least 
seek out someone else who you would trust, um, someone else in your industry, in your business, who knows houses, who knows um, something, another practitioner, or someone who you could talk to that would be helpful in learning the things that you don't know, the, learning the things of why something maybe isn't growing the way that you were hoping it to. And whatever the growth is, like I said, it can be in career, it could be getting a house, could be working on trying to work on your finances, your prosperity, could be on um, you're working on your body um, or a skill, um, muscle memory, all sorts of things. If you're just feeling frustrated because something's not growing or you're confused about it, that's what's really going on over these next two weeks is just this sort of battle between asking for help or and letting go of your pride or, or kind of keeping that chip on your shoulder pride feeling. Both aren't necessarily a bad decision to make, but it is your decision to make, and that's just something that's showing up here, um, kind of battling between the Seven of Pentacles. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at your external and internal influences, and especially since this has a lot to do with another person, I'll be very interested to see um, the differences between these two cards. So we're going to look into external influences over the next two weeks. So this represents other people's feelings, behaviors, actions, the things that they are doing but are outside of your control. So let's see what's coming in there for you um, over the next two weeks and how those those actions and influences and behaviors might be showing up in reflection of and influencing you. Interesting. So we have Pimpernel. Pimpernel has this little um, compass here. It's also in the spring suit in case timing represents anything for you. Um, but there's a compass here and it usually represents one, listening to your own inner compass um, and also that you're trying to find direction, right? And this also, Pimpernel can talk about sort of the idea of like hitting a fork in the road, hitting a crossroads and not sure which way to go. And there's a, a folk tale, I don't remember exactly how it goes, um, that Pimpernel grew out of a person who just stayed stuck at that crossroads and they wouldn't move forward because they didn't know where to go or they wouldn't ask for help or find directions or listen to their own inner compass. So instead, they just ended up staying there so long they turned into a Pimpernel. So for you, you might be feeling that stuck kind of energy as well. Again, that feeling of between pride or asking for help. Um, so this is really coming through that they might be that inner compass for you, especially since this is the external influence. Um, so externally, someone might be willing to help you or willing to give you a bit more direction um, if you would need that help, but it's just trying to decide if that is the right thing for you. And and if you don't have bad blood with this person, if you're not really feeling that resentment energy from this, um, if that's not resonating for you, then this is definitely a really good green light for you to go ahead and just ask them um, and to make that step because it could be really fulfilling and useful to you. But let's go ahead and see the other side um, and see what comes through. So this is internal influences, the things in which are in your control, your behaviors, your actions, and how they influence the situation over the next two weeks for you. Group two, what's coming through here for you? Okay, oh. <laughs> not sure if we need both of them. Kind of felt like the last one just flew out, but we'll see. Okay, so you got, uh, I always say this wrong, Clem Clem Clematis, Clematis, I don't know. I always say this flower wrong. Um, my best friend always collect, corrects me on it, but you have the number 22 and it's also in the um, summer suit and alongside it you have dandelion with number the number 33. Interesting that they're both double numbers, so in case that resonates for you for numbers, um, for numerolo numerological messages, you have twos, which have a lot to do with partnership, and threes having to do with um, teamwork and connections and building and networking. So it is interesting that there's sort of a, a shift there from kind of just listening to one or two voices to many more. Um, but yeah, here we have this specific flower, and this one has a lot to do with, in terms of like folklore and things as well, um, the idea of trusting in yourself, trusting that you built something enough that you could fall safely into what you've built, um, because a lot of the time, this flower really vines up walls or tries to find the perfect spot of sunlight, the perfect 
soil, the perfect water levels. They find everything to the perfect degree. Um, and they do so, so much, but they still cling to the wall. They still cling to their spot. They're still holding on, even though there might be no competitive, um, uh, like competition going around them. There's no reason for them to cling so tightly, right? They have everything so perfect. Why are they clinging? Uh, this talks about the idea that like you can let go, like you've built something here that you can fall into and it will safely hold you. You've built something that has such a safe um, foundation, it will hold you. And so if you have a lot of questions still as well, it's not that you can't still find those questions and answers, but you have built something up to this point that is substantial, that is having a really solid foundation. And that's something to not only celebrate over these next two weeks, but also something to um, allow yourself to not feel like you have to cling so tightly to it anymore, that you can um, have a little bit more ease there. Dandelion, on the other hand, has a lot more to do with ease, right? It also has more of that wish fulfillment energy. And you have two cards that showcase wishes, right? We have the idea of like blowing on a dandelion when it's in the, the seated state to like make a wish when you're a child or a childhood little wish. I mean, I still do it. And, uh, you can also have that throughout the card of the, um, the nine of cups here which has a lot to do with wish fulfillment as well so if you've been making wishes and this even came through with pile one as well so maybe a couple of you've come from that pile but um if you have been trying to make a wish lately you wished on a star you had a birthday wish or um just in general you're trying to manifest something law of attraction something um that just might be really making an impact and that's something to also be aware of that the that is going to be influencing your next two weeks as well because it might be positively bringing something in for you so I just wanted to mention that as well but we're going to go ahead and move on to your final card here with an advice card from the flora and fauna of the prairie majesty oracle um, and then we'll be moving on to your charms for those last little bits and bobs details but if you have enjoyed this video so far if you have found this reading useful in any way do feel free to give this video a like i really do appreciate it um, and you can also subscribe if you'd like to as well uh, but let's go ahead and look at this card so we're going to look into what you have coming in doesn't feel like it's that one what you have coming in for the next two weeks for your advice from the flora and fauna here i kind of see this as like a little messenger like um that just like sits on your shoulder the next two weeks and kind of helps you along um or like you know how like every disney princess has like one of those little little animals that follow along with them this kind of feels like that for you Okay, so you have the bee. What is mine to share? Sweeten and honeybee. Interesting that it has a lot to do with sharing and the idea of sharing information, sharing ideas. Um, and the bee also, it works in a community, it works in a hive, right? It has sort of that hive mind, much like ants and other insects. So the idea that you've got the bee might be that they're going to, that asking for help is going to sweeten the situation and not only that but um, bees not only work with their own personal hive but they also work with the um, the flowers and the different blooms and other things to help them grow and survive as well right it's a whole um, ecosystem that works together a whole community sort of uh, community helping sort of situation community aid and things so I really feel like also that even beyond the situation of the unknown and trying to maybe ask for help, you might be asking for people that are outside of your typical realm, outside of your typical hive, the people you know very closely. You might be networking and talking to other people outside of that um, to get different perspectives and to sweeten the situation in some way. And then also it can just be another sort of reason to maybe forgive or to let go of something, to release something um, within your heart that is sort of... Um, conflicting the situation of working together in that that hive mind energy so with all of that in mind let's go ahead and pull your charms here so feel free to send your energy in and we'll go ahead and mix these up for you so here we go the next two weeks group two
I'm gonna be honest, you guys did not have a lot of charms. Every single time I mixed them, it was just like, nope, just this one, just this one, just this one. Um, so you don't have a lot showing up here. They felt very specific though. The charms that I did pull for you here, we have the Lucky Clover charm. So we did talk about earlier with your specific rune having to do with um, synchronicities, right? Things synchronizing and coming into play. So the idea that you have two wish-making cards and you have a lucky four-leaf clover um, alongside all of this sweetening energy, it just seems like you're going to be very lucky. Um, you're going to feel like you've just taken the liquid luck potion and you're just feeling just kind of on that cloud nine feeling. Um and that, like, things are just going to roll into, even though things may not be, right? Other people might be seeing your situation as being kind of black and white or gray or just not really doing the best. You're going to be feeling kind of, like, on a high in some way. So I see that or just a lot of things that you've been wishing for and trying to manifest are really coming in and starting to synchronize over these next two weeks. Also to really listen to signs and signals from spirit that are coming in. Um, if you guys uh, ever do any, like... Uh, what is it cloudomancy where basically you look at the clouds and scry um that might be something that's interesting for you right we always think of it as some trivial fun little childhood thing but some of those things really do give us some signs and signals so watching the clouds looking at that or taking some time to have some mindful moments might give you some signs and signals some ideas that will pop in your head that could give you a little bit more information coming in as well and then alongside sweeten here you have the silver lining charm so even though it might be a hard situation there is a silver lining of gaining that information through working through someone maybe you dislike or you don't really want to be talking to or by just talking to people outside of your typical spectrum of um, or this, the typical people in your group that you very well, you're very well known and versed with. Listening to different diverse voices and ideas can be really useful and have a silver lining for you over these next two weeks as well. So that could be in the media that you're listening to. It doesn't have to be direct, right? You don't have to directly talk to someone to learn something from different groups and diverse people. But you could watch movies, TV shows, um, read stories online from their perspectives, things like that that could also be coming in. Um, even if it's outside of this, that might be coming through for you as well. So those are all of the charms and cards here. I'll zoom you out so you can see everything. I hope you, that this was useful to you. If you do have things that you're trying to manifest, do feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I'm very excited for the things that you have coming up and hopefully the information that you gain over these next two weeks. Uh, if you did find this video useful like I mentioned do feel free to give this video a like and I put out new videos every single Monday for love career spirituality and other pick a card readings um, and I'm even open to doing other fun readings in the future uh, that are more informative around tarot and magical esoteric kind of things so if that's your jam do feel free to subscribe uh, and also I have fun offerings that you can check out down below in the description as well so if you have questions beyond this reading and you want to reach out. I do snail mail readings that you can check out where I send a reading to you in the mail. I'm also open to different digital readings as well, but those price points are very dependent on what you need. So do feel free to message me or email me. And you can also uh, check out the different spell and ritual papers that I make uh, around different Sabbaths of the year. So I have all of that listed down below. I have Sawin paper right now that you can check out if that's something that you'd like even after Sawin into Scorpio season. Um, and I do believe that is everything. The Kindred tip jar is down there as well if you want to send anything in. And yeah, thank you so much for being here. I hope this reading was useful to you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Hello group three! If you've decided to choose this specific affirmation of laughter is the best medicine alongside the message here from Rato, which we're going to be talking about more here about your rune here in a moment, uh, but we're going to see what is coming in for you over the next two weeks. Uh, so we're going to be pulling from the charms alongside obviously the affirmations. Uh, we're also going to be using a couple different oracle decks and also the specific cosmic slumber tarot 
here. Uh, all of the information on all of this will be down below in the description if you want to seek out the different supplies that I used uh, for your reading. But we're going to start out by first talking about your specific rune and how it relates to laughter is the best medicine. So what you have coming up here is, um, and I made this myself in case you're curious, um, the specific idea of ride coming through with Rado. So that's one of the main words is ride or a journey. So we have a journey, it's about being mobile or um, some sort of movement, and it could be spiritual or inward journeys, it could be moving forward or um, trying to move towards something, but it's not necessarily about the destination in the end. It's not about the end result, but the process to get there, the people you meet kind of thing, right? It's more of a journey, not a destination. So over these next two weeks, you're going to be going through more of a journey. You're going to be possibly more mindful um, in the idea that you're going to be enjoying laughter, enjoying life, enjoying those small little moments and taking them in as these beautiful little like berries that you found on your journey, right? If you think of it as that, that sort of idea. It's not really a quest, right? You're not trying to just check something off your list. You're trying to just enjoy life in some way in those small little moments along the way. And then it could be medicine for you, it could be something that's really wonderful for you, it could be really um, healing and useful to you. So we're going to see how that relates to your next two weeks. In general, it just could be something you needed to hear as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So do feel free to get settled, get cozy, grab a blanket, some tea, a nice snack, um, some water, which I clearly need, so I'm going to do that real quick. Um, and yeah, just go ahead and ground yourself and kind of um, send your energy in through time and space here for the cards. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to look into three cards for the main energy coming through for you for the next two weeks. We're going to pull a card for external influences, internal influences, and an advice card alongside the charms. So let's go ahead and start first on those three main energies. So the next two weeks group three what do you have coming in for the main energies for you surrounding Rado and the idea of a journey that you're going to be kind of moving and and grooving on um there's a lightness that's coming through uh for your your pile I feel like there's a lot of cards that are trying to come out but I just don't feel like they're the right ones okay so we have both the two of pentacles and the eight of pentacles interesting um, the two of pentacles has a lot to do with balancing things out, tempering things, but the things that you're trying to balance or try to find a balance or trying to kind of even juggle at this time have a lot to do with materiality, have a lot to do with work, um, your body movement in that way, like physical movement. It can also be moving from one place to another, um, in terms of, um, like moving from one job to another or moving from one house or apartment to another there could be something showing on there showing up there especially with Rado I just feel like there's movement um in that juggling kind of energy that you're between jobs or between something uh we also have the eight of pentacles which is showcasing also trying to keep all your ducks in a line right um and this also has a lot to do with um precision uh it has a lot to do with being very uh like you've gone through something this isn't the first time um that you've possibly gone through this situation and it usually has a lot to do with sometimes tunnel vision or overly focusing on one thing uh so in both of these cards you can see they're very focused they're very kind of tunnel visioned in and whatever it is that you're tunnel visioning on if that's about a new journey if that's about a road trip if it's about your body or um your physical health, if it has a lot to do with your career or your job, whatever you feel like you're tunnel visioning on in a tangible material world, um, that's what's coming through with these two cards. But I want to see what comes through with the final one to give us a little bit more information on that. So group three, eight of pentacles and two of pentacles. What else is joining this card or these cards rather over these next two weeks for group three? Definitely feel free to send your energy in. Okay, so we have strength. Interesting. So um, what I'm getting here is a different kind of strength, right? It takes a lot of strength to, to hold all of these things up and to, you know, a lot of strain even on your eyes, a lot of strain on your muscles, a lot of strain in that way. I'm feeling a lot of physical strain, honestly, um, like in my body. 
So when it comes to strength, I'm feeling that idea too that you're just kind of pushing your body maybe a little bit too hard. You're going maybe a little too hard on whatever it is that you're trying to do. I'm feeling more of that quest energy that I talked about earlier, right? That you're trying to tack the tick things off your list trying to put the little x's in the boxes and move on and move on and your to-do list keeps growing and growing you're trying to hold it there's something about that right that I just feel like you just keep having the reason why you're tunneling tunnel visioning on it so hard and trying to make something happen so much is not only for the reward of um like the the feeling of like yes I finished that thing which isn't necessarily a bad thing to go after but it does mean that you're maybe not also adding to the list like eating a meal or feeling like frivolous things like laughing and watching a movie or a comedy or taking some time off to be with friends or to go out for you know a cup of coffee with a friend or whatever it is feels like you're putting your walls down or feels like you're not holding things up anymore and there's this strength this like I'm capable I'm strong I've got this I can do it kind of push through it energy that I'm getting from your cards and so if you're feeling that right now, if you're feeling like um, it doesn't even necessarily mean that you even know that it's a strain, but I feel like it is quite a strain on your body, a strain on your mental health or a strain on like your sleep and things like that. Those those things that maybe feel frivolous, but are really important and useful to you. Um, it's just coming up. I just feel like that's the advice that you're getting even from these cards It's just like to slow down, take a minute and notice what other things need to, need to be more importantly added to your list, even if they seem frivolous, um, is coming through. But those are the energies that we have playing around here. I am very curious to see your next two cards though. So these are going to be um, your external and internal influences. So things that are externally and internally influencing the next two weeks. So external external ones will pull first and those are usually things that are outside of your control. They're society at large, they're your boss, the actions that are happening on that end, their behaviors, their feelings, things that you can't control. So let's see what's coming through for those influences over the next two weeks. Group three. Group three, what do we got here? Mm -hmm. Again, I feel like the cards are with your specific pile. <laughs> of course, yeah, you got Apple here. Um, with your specific pile are feeling very like they just, they can't decide. So there also is maybe a bit of indecision that's happening here and maybe that's why um, you're juggling things. Uh, but we have here the number 53. This is in the winter suit and it is the Apple. And the Apple usually talks about... Um, seeing the end in sight right you can see the end in sight there even is sort of that tunnel vision that I, you can even see in this card in the background of it and um seeing the end in sight for a goal but feeling like something keeps getting in your way right the apple being the thing that's in your way right now right you're trying to reach the end but something keeps getting in your path keeps um stepping on your toes or trying to like um stop you from the tunnel the, the vision that you're on right kind of derailing you that's sort of what I'm I'm coming up with here or trying to come up with so these being your external influences things that are outside of your control you just might have a few roadblocks that come your way um and that are kind of like it almost feels like someone's throwing the apple in in your path and you have to restack it again or it just feels like it's just another thing on your stack that you weren't um, expecting. So there is something about maybe being a little bit more prepared for that and just keeping that in mind, but also that some of those roadblocks just might be you um, first thinking they're a roadblock, but realizing that it's just, again, that frivolous idea of like, I don't have time for, you know, breakfast, even though it's really important for you, or I don't have time to, to take a shower today, I'll take it tomorrow because I've got this to do and this to do, or I don't have time, you know, it's just like, that's what's coming through with this card is that those little things that maybe someone's asking you out for a drink or there or someone's um wanting to hang out with you or those little tasks are just sort of derailing your vision and that's just kind of maybe annoying you or making you feel a little bit like oh another thing I have to add but it does seem like it's going to be worth your time and worth your while so let's go ahead and see the internal influences so these are things that are in in your control, your actions, your behaviors, your thoughts, your feelings, um, the stuff that you can, you can be doing there. So let's see what you have coming up here, group three, over the next two weeks. So 
stuff that is influencing your next two weeks here. Okay, goodness, <laughs> I'm dropping everything. Okay, so you got Mandrake. You also had showing up here just below it um, that came up as well, just in case you this resonates for any of you. You have mistletoe as well, so you might be seeing things around a ceasefire or um, kind of putting putting something aside. There's something about forgiveness that also can come from this card. So in case that's showing up for anything that you maybe have going on, um, I thought I'd show that. But the one that flipped out the first time um, with the other one was Mandrake here. And it is the number 50 with also in the... Um, the winter suit. So the winter suit is about slowing down, taking some time to slow down, right? Um, melting with the snow. And Mandrake is also a card that showcases, you know, a lot of things that um, have to do with the body, right? They even grow as sort of like this little body. So this is, again, the things that are inside of your control are to look after your body. And this has literally come up with all three of the groups. Uh, so clearly, it's a very important message to all of us universally and collectively right now is that it's just really important to listen to your body and to take care of your body right now um, in terms of like, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You can eat, but it's just making sure that you're eating, that you're giving yourself some time um, to laugh, some time for your own mental health, um, for understanding yourself in that way, and not putting yourself and your body on the back burner. Um, so again, those are things that are within your control over these next two weeks, and I feel like I've talked about this a little bit already, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to your next card, um, but uh, that tunnel vision, as great as it is, does require um, adding a few more things to that vision then, um, or kind of just allowing yourself to take some time away from that vision um, and enjoy just the journey of life versus those quests. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what you have coming in for this, this middle card for advice, but... Um, we are going to pull the charms here just after, but if you are enjoying this video so far, if you have found this reading useful, do be sure to give this video a like. It really does help the channel so much, and I truly do appreciate it. So thank you to everyone who has. Uh, but let's go ahead and see. Uh, surprisingly, I think I'm going to go ahead and take the one that flew over here. Um, so you have build. Interesting, right? You are building something in a lot of these cards. Um, you're trying to build something, trying to get up to something, trying to bloom in some way. So the idea that you got build with the beaver is really interesting. And it's not that it's to, again, put everything aside and just you know, do all the frivolous things and just not do any of the, the work that you wanted to work on. I'm not saying to like the extremity of that, but build is giving you more of the idea of what am I integrating? And what's really interesting about um, beavers and they can, you know, build a dam and it can completely change the entire ecosystem and layout of of those who live there, the fish that move through um, the river, the way the river flows, it can make such an impact. So the point is you can build um, on what you're already building on, but it is going to make an impact. Uh, so whether that's a negative or positive impact is kind of up to you, but it is sort of reminding yourself, what are you integrating into your life? What tasks, what goals, what journeys, what laughter are you integrating? And is it creating a positive or negative impact in your life? So this is more of less of an advice like please do this or don't do this kind of thing and more of a I'm going to leave it up to you kind of answer. But it is just a reminder that you do make an impact with the different actions and goals that you take on um, and that there are consequences to each of those, whether positive or negative, on the landscape of your life. So I do want to keep that in mind while we move on to your charms and see if anything else comes through. But do feel free to send your energy in through time and space and we'll start mixing these up for you. So here we are, group three, the next two weeks. Okay, so you have a few charms that fell here. Um, you have the ground 
grounding charm that came up kind of as a universal charm for you. And this is a ceramic charm. It feels really heavy. It feels really nice. It feels really grounded. Um, so this is a charm to just remind yourself to take some time also to ground yourself back down. Um, right? You're trying to lift yourself and tunnel vision yourself up to build something so high um, that you might just need to take some time and some downtime for yourself. And that's showing up as, as well um, as a few other cards here. I'm going to set it here. Also, it is the same color as the laughter is the best medicine. So again, watching a movie or a comedy with a friend might be really useful for you over these next two weeks to just sort of ground and take some, take a load off. Uh, you also have the, uh, partnership charm of the number two. This can represent partnerships, relationships, um, duality, one-on-one -on -one energy. And what I think is interesting is strength is showcasing two different people. You also have two showing up here. And the idea of duality, again, has shown up with all three of the piles. So again, another collective energy showing up here, the duality of rebirth and death of the Scorpio cycle. Um, or rather the Scorpio season. So I do feel like there's some things that need to fall to the wayside so that other things can start to come and be integrated back in. And that's why this is showing up here, less of the relationship side and more of the duality um, and trying to not push only one extreme, but also coming back and grounding back down to some other things that need to maybe be integrated that would be more useful to you. So um, that could be better habits for you. That could be um, not having to, to hold on so tightly with the the strength card here um, to make things work but that things are actually going to be easier if you get that good night rest that you can hold things better you have a better perspective you know whatever it might be um, but there are positive things that could be coming from um, what might feel like it would be frivolous or not useful to you and then lastly here on the build charm you are build card rather you have the charm of the key to your heart uh, so like I said, there might be, it might also be that you're very focused right now on career or very focused on um, those physical, tangible things in life. And the beaver is reminding you to also integrate things that would be useful to you and great opportunities that could come from things that you love and enjoy as well. Not that you don't enjoy your job but or your whatever it might be there, but that other things could be integrated as well. Um, that could be really useful and uh, great opportunities for you and might even open opportunities and doors for you in ways you hadn't expected so to keep that in mind as well that what you integrate might seem silly on the surface but actually ends up building something much bigger than you thought and creating a bigger impact on your personal ecosystem and homeostasis so with that in mind I do believe that is everything here so I'm going to go ahead and zoom you out so you can see everything fully I hope that this reading was useful to you and if it was like I mentioned earlier do be sure to give this video a like you can also comment down below how it resonated I love hearing your thoughts um, or any other videos that you'd like to see in the future that would be really useful as well to me I'd love that kind of feedback um, you can also subscribe if you'd like to to the channel as I put out new videos every single Monday for love career spirituality for other things um, that are more educational I have a whole master um, sort of video on charm casting a master guide on it so if that's something you're interested in in as well I'd be open to be doing more videos that are more educational like that so do let me know uh, and subscribe. You can also check out the different offerings that I have down below. If you guys have been interested in getting a private reading, I do uh, some digital readings. Do feel free to message me if that's something you're interested in. Each of those are very um, unique to each person, but I also do snail mail readings where I send a reading to you in the mail for you to enjoy. Um, they're typewritten as well on a type, a vintage typewriter, so they're very easy and clear and um, nice to read. Uh, but you can also check out the Samhain spell and ritual paper that I have out right now. It's great for even beyond Samhain and Halloween, so you can check out those paper sets. And I do believe that is everything alongside the Kindred Tip Jar. Um, and I hope that you found this useful. I wish you the best for this tunnel visioning. I personally know what it's like. I definitely get this sometimes. So um, I hope that you do find a little bit of that rest and ease um, throughout your journey over these next two weeks. And I wish you the best. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.